So, a little while ago, we saw the release of the second part of the third season of Bridgerton, and, well, for me, it went down like a lead balloon. After really enjoying a lot of the first part of the season, a lot of the story threads kind of fell flat for me, and I think for a lot of other people too. There's been a lot more criticism of the characters and their arcs this season than I remember there being for any other season before it, but still they've pulled in massive numbers, so it's not like this discontent is going to sink the show. The last video I made on Bridgerton, we talked about the big twist at the end of the Francesca John storyline, and that is that by the time of their kiss, she no longer seemed to be feeling it. And then when John's cousin Michaela was introduced, Franny had all the symptoms of a love match that her mother had described feeling when she first met Edmund. And of course, the big twist is that Michaela has been gender bent from the books and thus the fandom, well, they certainly had their thoughts. Like I said, I had my own thoughts on all of that, and you can hear all about it in that video. But whilst I think that's probably the biggest controversy that we saw in the latest season, it's not the only one. And for me, one of the biggest grievances I had with the entire story is the way in which the character of Cressida Cowper was handled. Her rise and fall, so to speak. Her failed redemption. And this discontent has spurred me into making somewhat of a defense video. And so here we are, in defense of Cressida Cowper. Okay, so unlike a lot of defense videos, this isn't really a defense from a fandom perspective. I think it's perhaps more apt to say that this is a video that aims to show that Cressida got done dirty, not just from a character point of view, but from simply a writing point of view. But first we need some context. When we first meet Miss Cowper, she's pretty much the archetypical character. A largely bland, mean girl type. She's there to compete with our protagonist Daphne in season one, as she's being courted by the visiting prince, the nephew of the queen. And yeah, like I said, a kindly soul she is not. She's a very generic antagonistic character filled with snide remarks and cruelty. But I don't think she's a character that you're supposed to really hate that much or take all that seriously as competition against Daphne. She dresses absurdly as if she's from the Hunger Games, and her personality rather sucks. She tries to draw attention to herself, but ultimately is considered nothing compared to Daphne in the eyes of the Ton or suitors in general. She's an annoyance, but nothing more than that. And this continues into season two, where she remains a massive bully. She kind of shit talks Aloise, but I think she also wants to be her friend, and she shit talks Pen to try to make that happen. And obviously it fails, and she looks like an idiot for thinking it would work before she starts to be courted by Jack Featherington, the new Lord Featherington, who wants to marry her because she has a big fat dowry. And the Featherington estate is bankrupt because of old Lord Featherington, and Jack brought no new money into the family due to his business ventures. His minds are an abject failure. And so she's the big fish for him. But she can't land him, as if the devil works hard, Portia Featherington works harder, and she manipulates things to ensure that Jack has to propose to her daughter, Prudence before skillfully managing to get him to Vamoose for good with some tasty, tasty blackmail. And at the same time, I'm pretty sure he managed to swindle the Cowpers out of some significant money, which goes to the Featheringtons. <laughs> and so as we can see, the first two seasons frame her as a minor antagonist to the Bridgerton and Featherington girls, but one whose bark is far worse than her bite, a character with no real depth, who simply serves to annoy us by insulting the heroes before she gets her comeuppance by being overlooked or rejected. And whilst it's not necessarily the most compelling arc to see play out, the show is called Bridgerton, not Cowper. And so it's not like people were clamoring for much more depth from her. But in the end, that's what we got during the course of season three, the Cressida Cowper redemption tour, at least for the first part. During the climax of season two, the last couple of episodes, in order to save herself and her identity as Lady Whistledown, whilst also trying to throw the queen off the scent of Aloise, Penn has the bright idea to socially ruin her friend by revealing that she's been attending radical political rallies. And when Aloise finds out, it tanks their friendship and both head off to the country estates. And I guess that the Capra estate is relatively close to Aubrey Hall or whatever it's called. And so she was able to make contact with Aloise, who at the time was a bit of a social outcast, being viewed as a disgrace and shunned by polite society. She made contact and offered her friendship, and Aloise wasn't really in a position to refuse. And so the unlikely friendship between the two was born. And through this friendship, we got to see more of the inner workings of Cressida's life, which explains why she is the way she is, why she's been so awful in the past and how that's impacted her today. And that's not to give her a pass or an excuse for her behavior, but to give the audience an explanation for it, to get them more invested in her storyline and understand her and sympathize with her a bit, to want her and Aloise to genuinely remain friends and for Cressida to continue to try to redeem her actions, with maybe a hitch or two along the way for some drama, but at the end, there'd be a nicely done arc weaving throughout the season. And I mean, it does start relatively strong. There's their friendship. One that seems to be born from Aloise trying to punish Penn at first, until it's shown that actually, Cressida, like Aloise, was a bit of an outsider to the Ton. And so their friendship is one that is actually genuine. And there's definitive growth on both sides. Especially in the wake of the Colin is helping Penn find a husband reveal that Aloise had accidentally leaked to the Ton. Cressida has the opportunity to spread that gossip for her own gain, and she doesn't. 
growth. And then we further delve into Cressida's life, and it's clear that her dad, he sucks, and he sucks hard. He clearly just hates fun. He's a miserable bastard. There's not one redeeming thing about this man. And on top of that, he seems to clearly disdain his daughter and his wife. And while she tries to compete with Penn for Lord Debling's attention, her dad takes matters into his own hands and makes it clear that if she doesn't get married soon, he's going to marry her off to one of his friends. A friend of a similar age or greater to him. Lovely. Every little girl's dream getting hitched to a geriatric. I mean, no shame if that's you. But let's move on. She's set up to be a very sympathetic character in a truly terrible position. Because in that first part of the season, even Aloise is like, oh shit, that sucks. And her dad tells her to stay away from Aloise, but she refuses because she's the first true and genuine friend that she's ever managed to make. And so she's not going to give that up and she defies her father's wishes. And for somebody who was a dull and meaningless mean girl archetype before, this was actually interesting and compelling. And you'd have to figure there's going to be some pretty good payoffs for this. Because ultimately, Bridgerton's not a realistic show, and so in the end, she's going to get a happy ending, and she's not going to have to marry the terrible old guy. It'll be great. Shit, maybe even Lady Danbury's going to get involved in the story to help somebody avoid the same fate as her. After all, in that second part, they reference her trying to run away from her betrothal. Why not have her help another woman escape a miserable life of marital rape from a man who views them only as a vessel for children and his own pleasure? There's so many directions to take the story in the second part and ways to continue her redemption or even just keep her as a deeply flawed anti-hero type character. Instead, her life really just does go off the deep end in the worst ways possible. She's seemingly unable to think of a way to avoid marrying the old guy and thus starts to get desperate for any sort of idea and so when she sees the reward for Lady Whistledown is enough for her to escape her life and start again, she goes through with her reckless plan to try to expose herself falsely as Lady Whistledown in front of everybody the entire ton and the queen to get her the money. And at this point, her only friend Aloise departs their friendship. And in order to try to prove herself to the queen, she has to try to write a fake whistle down, but she fails. And so her mum steps in to make a scathing hit piece on Violet Bridgerton, which fails because Penn releases a real Lady Whistledown to reclaim her title. And in a last ditch attempt to salvage her life, she tries to blackmail Penn with the identity of Lady Whistledown, which fails when Penn outs herself to the ton and is able to keep on writing her gossip rag under her own name. Very convenient, no repercussions at all. And so Cressida gets shipped off with her aunt who has as much joy and kindness as her father does to live a life of disgrace in Wales. Lovely. So, just for starters, as an aside, this storyline pissed me off significantly because it felt like wasted time. A failed redemption arc where a somewhat reforming bully hits a stumbling block and reverts to who they were before. And then they encounter consequences. And in the end, I just feel like they wasted my time because it's not compelling. That second part of the season with her, it's just not compelling. They've walked everything back so thoroughly. Why bother building this interesting story of her changing and Aloise seeing the good in her? Just to have her turn back into an antagonist. Just... Keep her as a bad guy throughout the entire storyline if that's how you're going to end things off. It just feels like two different ideas of a story that were badly fused into one and just leaves you feeling a bit annoyed. I honest to God just think it was very bad writing. On top of that, I feel like Cressida was completely and inordinately punished by the narrative in ways that really didn't feel deserved based on what we've seen on screen. In my eyes, the ending of her storyline is meant to feel tragic and sad, but you're also supposed to think, oh well, it's a shame, but she did bring it on herself. But did she? Does being a snarky bully for a couple years mean that she deserves to be sold off and raped by an old man? No, the answer is no. Like, look at her actions this season. She's friends with Aloise. She does not spill the gossip. She forgives Aloise for thinking that she did and yelling at her publicly. Her dad is clearly abusive to some level and threatens to marry her off if she can't find a husband, which, you know, he should be helping with, surely. She confides all of this to Aloise, who in my view is not really sympathetic, or at least not as much as you'd expect somebody to be especially since Aloise is supposed to be interested in women's empowerment. Someone being forced to wed an old man, that goes against that view. But instead, Cressida's often listening to her and gives her a chance to vent, and even sticks by Aloise in defiance of her father's will. Then Cressida's given the news that she's now engaged to the old lord, and it feels like Aloise immediately checks out of the friendship. She's like, yeah, 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 whatever. That sucks to be you. She even tells Penn later on, oh, the friendship was starting to sour. Talk about using somebody. Fair weather friend indeed. I can't imagine giving so little of a shit about my own friend that I wouldn't at least try to come up with some sort of strategy to help them out. But instead she prioritizes her brother and Penn so completely, despite the fact that she has a longer deadline for that. They're getting married in a couple of weeks. What about your friend here? She needs to escape her horrible fate in the immediate future. Shit. Yikes. And on top of that, you can think of more than one thing at once. And so this leads to Cressida committing cardinal sin number one. She claims to be Lady Whistledown. 
And I swear Eloise and Penn act like she whipped out a gun at the party and shot Gregory in the face. Acting like she spat on orphans, kicked a dog and threw a cat into a pond. Eloise is so unreasonably angry here. She ends the friendship. I do not understand. Maybe I get being a bit annoyed that she hijacked the party, but god damn it. I just, I still don't get how this is so horrible. And then we follow Penn, who is so deeply angry that her hard work is being credited to Cressida, who she views as a bully, despite also being a bully. It feels like the show frames this as some great offence, some big indignity on Penn's behalf. Women undercutting women type of deal. And thus Penn's simply doing the right and righteous thing. But at the same time, the context. This is not some grand, empowering thing. This is a gossip rag that makes money off of bullying and cruelty. Remember that time that Penn sabotaged a random modiste? That's right, an aristocrat smashing a small business with no mercy or regret. And so already, I think the narrative inordinately punishes Cressida for an offence that's really not even that bad. It's a bit cringe to do so, like to claim that she is who she is not, and it's very easy to debunk if the Queen even tried to do so, but it's not like she killed someone. Where her actions do start to get bad and make her seem less than ideal is when she gets her mum to ride a whistle down with her, which yeah, it's mean and it's cruel and you can't take that away. But it was her mum mostly, right? Cressida's is very bad for agreeing to it. I don't deny that, but it's clear that her mum wanted to settle a score with Violet and publicly embarrass her more than she actually wanted to help her daughter. She even straight up tells her this, and she says that women in the ton have to look out for number one, themselves. But the narrative punishment is not the mother's to bear, it's Cressida's. And once again, it feels like the show frames this as a, oh no, the consequences of my own actions. It's like when one villain betrays another in a movie or a TV show, and you're supposed to feel some sort of catharsis, to yell at the screen, that's what you get. That's how it feels to be betrayed, you bad person. Sucked in. And so I think you can tell that you're supposed to somewhat find this to be justice. Because our main hero characters of the season, Aloise, Penn, Colin, Violet, they all dislike this girl. They're all offended by this girl. And there's no hint by the narrative that this isn't what she deserves. You know, other than the great performance by the actor, who has a very expressive and heartbreaking face at times. And then the story doubles down even further to make her seem even worse by trying to shatter the happiness of the main couple through a blackmail attempt, which goes nowhere before she's carted off to Wales to live in misery, with Penn giving a brief, <laughs> whoops, shit happens, edition of Whistle Down. The whole story just doesn't sit right. I can't just help but feel that it's just very, very bad writing. It makes every single character involved look like shit. Especially Aloise, who seems like the worst type of fair weather friend imaginable, and yet she's clearly being framed as innocent here. But she was checking out of the friendship before Cressida even did anything in her desperation to escape the marriage that had been planned for her. On top of that, it makes Penn look weirdly greedy and honestly very stupid. She wants to be acknowledged as Whistledown, despite it being an obvious path to ruin. And not just for her, but for the Bridgertons and the Featheringtons. And it just, it just makes me annoyed that they had so many directions they could have tataken the story, only to do a lame, mean girl gets what she deserves storyline, which just feels gross. Gross, gross, gross in so many different ways. Whoever wrote that shit needs to put down the pencil. I really hope that's not the end for her character, because that ending is straight ass. But let's be real, I don't know how to fix it. Because it feels like all her narrative bridges are burned. But we'll see. And so yeah, not much else to say really, other than these have all just been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of Cressida's arc? Are you with me on this? Maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you think it's the greatest writing ever. Emmy-worthy stuff. I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.